much of the value of the coronation will lie in the eye of the beholder. There will be those who find it an awe-inspiring event. British royalty in all its splendor rooted in centuries of great tradition. There will be others who find it an outdated arrangement, a waste of time and money. Britain is quite divided on this as we've seen in recent days again and again. The majority still supports royalty but only just about and that is a huge change from the great support for royalty back in 1953 at the time of the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. Bob Morris from the Constitution Unit of the University of London considers what could have changed and why. I, mean, I think uh, people are reviewing uh, their attitudes. We know a lot about the prince who is now the king. We knew almost nothing about his mother when she succeeded. She was a 25-year-old woman when she succeeded, 26 at her coronation. And there's all the difference in the world between the coronation of a young woman who had two small children and the coronation of a man who was 74 years of age. And um, the coronations, amongst other things, mark changes in our society because you look back at what has passed and you see what we have become. We are now a multiracial society in a way that we were not remotely like that in 1952-3. We now have a, a, an ethnic minority population of over 15%. And this has altered our society and the king is struggling to find ways of recognizing that in this coronation. And when the coronation takes place, I mean, it will stimulate, I think, a discussion, a healthy discussion in Britain about what the monarchy is for, what he can do. And uh, amongst Republicans, they will have to explain why we're not a republic already and what actually would change if we move to a, a, an elected head of state. At the bottom of the debate lies money, unsurprisingly. Questions about not just what the coronation costs, but what royalty itself costs. Claims, on the other hand, of what royalty brings. Well, I, I think it's difficult to see what the monarchy brings, actually. I don't think one could uh, produce a, a tenable figure. So one tends to concentrate on the costs, and the costs are real, undoubtedly. At the moment, they're much um, exaggerated because the cost has been doubled to pay for the uh, re-servicing uh, of Buckingham Palace, which is falling down. You know, Part of the ceiling fell down on a, an in investiture on one occasion. And so that needs attention. Um, and the money is being provided by government. And the money that is given is set and um, according to the profits of a, uh, the Crown estate, which was never part of the Crown's own pro property, is used to defray the costs of civil government. But that money has uh, plateaued, and so it's now worth 12% less than it was two years ago. So the monarchy you know, rides um, difficult times as the rest of the population do as well, in that sense. And if you're going to have a monarchy, then it has to have a certain style and ceremonial weight. And uh, we have so far decided to keep that in, in our society. Those views may change. Who knows? It is for Parliament to decide.